And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. At this point in time, we'll be having Desmond Majakudumi joining the conversation. Desmond, it's good to have you join us this morning. Great to be with you. Good morning. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. <laughs> Same to you. Well, a bit of, you know, a background to our conversation. Nigerians have been tasked to adopt and, you know, adapt renewable energy to address climate change effects. Experts say that the fight against climate change should go beyond mitigation uh, to engaging in adaptation. They called on corporate organizations and individuals to adopt the use of renewable energy sources to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. They also call for behavioral change among Nigerians in order to address climate change effects. Now, uh, this is a point where we have Maja Kudumi, who is an environmentalist. Uh, he's also an activist, by the way, advocating the cost of the environment. I'm sure the environment should be very happy to have someone who's speaking for them, the <laughs> birds and the animals and what have you. Maja Kudumi, it's good to have you join us this morning. Yes, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, not just I'm. I'm obviously very happy to hear that, but um, more importantly, nature, the essence of nature, will also be extremely happy. It's um, it's the biggest issue humanity has ever faced, and that's you know it's a difficult one for us to really get our heads around because hey, you know I have a big issue. Employment, I have a big issue with money stream, I have a big issue with school fees, with housing, with that, you know. I, so, I think we should we should take the conversation from that point now. So how can we address, you know, the issue of climate change when we also have concerns of survival? For instance, we talk about, you know, generating revenue, just like you have mentioned. For instance, we're very dependent on oil for our earnings as a country. And we have been constantly told to harness, you know, the environment and what we have. Uh, to make sure that we survive. So how can we address that when the survival of humanity is also dependent on all the environment as well? No, that's a very good uh, perspective to look at it from. But the, the reality is, okay, suppose you're on a, on a ship <laughs> that is beginning to sink. And even though you might be hungry, uh, and you might have all kinds of problems, the reality is that uh, if that ship sinks, <laughs> all those problems will be washed away because the gravity of the situation is far greater than what you're experiencing now. That is the problems you're experiencing now. Likewise, this whole climate change issue, the gravity of the consequences of not dealing with it in time. You see, there's a time limit within which we have to deal with it. The gravity of not dealing with it in time, it totally overshadows every other problem and issue that we have. And in the process of that overshadowing, in the process of the climate change establishing itself more viciously on humanity, all of those other problems are going to be exacerbated. That's why they're telling us one of the major reasons why there's uh, millions of more people going into extreme poverty, into extreme food shortage and so on. One of the major reasons is because climate change is affecting the agriculture sector. We're finding it more difficult to grow the food that we used to grow, especially in Africa and also in Nigeria, which is very much rain-dependent agricultural country. So climate change problem totally overshadows all other problems. But the solution to it will also bring solution to the other problems. All right, uh, Desmond, uh, at the just concluded um, COP26, uh, Nigeria committed to uh, net zero emission at the conference by 2060. But how far is that how is it possible how far can we really go in terms of before 2060 uh, where we have our energy carrier of 81.25 percent being biomass uh, natural gas 8.2 percent petroleum product 5.3 percent crude oil 4.8 percent hydropower 0.4 percent and others which is less than uh, about 1 um, percent we are committing to net emission by 2060 but with what we have on ground how possible is it if we continue as we are 
it's impossible. You know, it's a, it's a commitment. I can commit myself to elevating off the floor. Uh, but I, if, I, if I don't have the machinery for the process of the elevation, then the commitment will not come to pass. And it's a difficult one, you know, in all fairness to our government officials who have made these commitments. It's a very, very difficult one because we are a fossil fuel dependent economy. We are mainly fossil fuel dependent for our energy source. And to, you know, transit away from that, it's, um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take very, very definite and concerted efforts. And then also, there's the, um, you know, moralistic aspect of it that, hey, you know, we in Africa, we in Nigeria, are not the main contributor of this uh, global warming that has caused the climate change. <laughs> it's not us that started the Industrial Revolution that was burning all this fossil fuel for decades and decades that was causing this massive, massive disruption of the perfect atmospheric system. And you see, that's one thing we need to take cognizance of. The system of this earth, it's a perfectly made system. The creator who created the earth, he created it in a perfect way that it is perfectly balanced. And because of that balance, it is the only uh, obstacle in space. And we've been able to observe millions of obstacles. It's the only planet in space that can support life because of this incredible, intricate harmony of the balances of nature on this planet and in the atmosphere. And in this particular case, we're referring to the atmospheric gases. There's several of them, and they're all there in a specific proportion, certain amount. But we, for the last 150 years, have been pouring and pouring and pouring a whole lot of one of those particular gases, that's CO2, which comes from burning in the fossil fuel. So for us to meet our obligations, it's not going to be easy. But then, you know, sometimes, you know, a difficult thing it can be hard to do. That's why it's called difficult. But, and we need to get this into our consciousness, it has to be done. We still have a little bit of time for the transition process. And what will help is if Nigeria, the giant of Africa, takes her rightful place and starts to lead Africa, at least to lead the subcontinent, to lead West Africa in negotiation with the industrialized world and telling them that no, you must make funds available for this tower transition so that we can mitigate and adapt to this climate change that you people have caused. We are demanding that these funds should be made available to the African sub-region, to West Africa. And we have a bargaining card because one of the things that's going to help tremendously is nature herself. We are the tropical rainforest. We are the tropical mangrove forest. And these entities are part of that incredible, harmonious, miraculous entity that we were referring to earlier as the miracle of creation. These entities, uh, Desmond, these rainforest and mangrove, absorb the CO2. Desmond, I, I'd like us to speak to policy now, uh, speak to some of government policies as it were. Uh, for instance, uh, there's also a plan, Nigeria plans to generate 3,000 megawatt by, I beg your pardon, 30,000 megawatt by 2030. Now, out of the 30,000 megawatts by 2020, by 2030, uh, 3,000 megawatts of the promised increase or increment will be from renewable energy sources. And I, I, I'd like to ask you, do, do you think that we're really ready to as much as it sounds very laudable to, you know, embrace the, you know, clean energy as it were. Looking at our policy yeah, direction, looking at our capacity. We, we, mm -hmm. we can, we can, can be, we can be. It just depends on, you know, if we appreciate the seriousness of it, the urgency of it. So, so how do you, so how do you explain, how do you explain 3,000 megawatts out of 30,000? So we're going to be producing 30,000 megawatts. That's the vision. That's the plan. And out of that 30,000 yeah. megawatts, we hope that, uh, you know, 3,000 of it will be from renewable energy. Look at the statistics. 
Yeah, yeah, we can we can do it because the luckily for us the the resources for the renewable energy are in tremendous abundance here. And if we get the funding, the money, and that's why I refer to Nigeria taking a rightful place and being able to stand up as a giant instead of you know lying comatose being the laughing stock of the world, which is what we are right now, because you know the leadership have led us you know to to, to just be the laughing stock. But it can be transitioned. We, we we can change from that. And you know if we can demand for the money, and if the funds are available, because uh, the resources are there, we have abundant sunshine all over the country. By the time you get to the north, you have tremendous amount of sunshine and also heat. And both uh, sunlight and heat can be converted into energy, into electricity. And also, in certain sections of our country, we have almost constant wind on the higher plateaus, on the higher hilly areas. There's wind, wind, wind going all the time. And wind energy is one of the cheapest ways of producing electricity. Storage is becoming more and more uh, uh, viable now. And also, there's even wave energy. So nature has provided us with the blessing of all the natural, all the necessary resources to be able to have our energy transition revolution. We could even go more than that. Once the funds are available and the funds are deployed judiciously. And this is part of the challenge that we're having in getting funds released to us. Because uh, people who have released funds to Nigeria have seen over time that a lot of those funds do not get deployed to where they were designated to be deployed. Corruption, corruption, so, corruption. So, so, so but, but uh, Desmond, I, Desmond, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm also asking that if you look at you know, our policies as it were, I'm, I'm just stating a policy, a vision that we have. We're in 2023, 2030 is not far from us. And if we're talking about renewable energy, we're talking about the issue of climate change, let's go clean. Right, 30,000 megawatts of power will be, uh, you know, is the vision. And then out of that, 3,000 would be from renewable energy. So it leaves us with 27,000, you know, from um, energy that's not clean, if I like to put. So my question is, are we really sincere, even with the commitment that we make every other time? Are we sincere to achieving this? looking at the policies that we have on ground and also looking at our capacity and what have you. Let's also not take out the, um, you know, the conversation. I have asked this before. Mm. We know that we're highly mm. dependent on oil for earnings and, you know, uh, extracting resources from, uh, you know, the environment trying to survive. So with all of this, do you think that we're headed towards uh, renewable energy as a country? Um, no, we're not. We're definitely not. We're making the policies, we're pronouncing the policies, but the capacity to do it in terms of the, as I alluded to earlier, in terms of the finances to do it uh, are not available. And unfortunately, uh, some of the finances that have been deployed have not been um, put in that right direction. But I am very optimistic that um, the necessary change to do this is, is going to be forthcoming. It's going to be driven by, you know, the young people, people like yourselves in the, in the media and so on, because of, you know, the stark reality. Again, part of it is because we're not seeing the reality. We're not listening to what is a bit of an inconvenient truth. But when the Secretary General of the United Nations tells you that what we're doing is insanity, his words are, <laughs> mankind is waging war against nature. All right, and Dennis, this uh, is one. madness because nature always fights back. All right, you know, and the, the scientists are warning us. All right, Desmond, if I have to just chip in right now, we've talked about adapting and adopting uh, renewal, renewable energy as it is right now. Mercy rightly pointed out that we've all, we have plans, policies for 30,000, but only 10% uh, of it is uh, towards that. Another angle I want to look at is actually accessibility, affordability as it were. Uh, you know, uh, most people have transitioned to solar energy, solar, solar powering, but it is not so popular to the average man on the street because of the huge cost outlay, the finance economically. So if we're talking about adopting renewable energy when it is very expensive, just where are we headed? Yeah, 
it's um, only expensive because the the profitability factor is still playing too high a role in the process, and this is this is what has brought us to the crux of this problem. Again, this is the biggest problem that humanity has ever faced. It's just, it's, it's so serious, you know, okay? And what is one of the major drivers of the problem is um, the socioeconomic system that we've all embraced so wholeheartedly, which uh, has some tremendous benefits. But the downside that's causing the problem is that we are putting profit ahead of planet and people. Profit ahead of people, of people's welfare, of people's well-being. You know, it's profit. You worship the profit. No matter what, we must make more money out of this. So when we're going to be doing even the solar cells, the photovoltaics, we have to make it as profitable as possible. We cannot subsidize it. We must make money, money, money. You see, and this is, this is what's causing the problem. And nature basically is just saying, look, you humans, you know, you've gone too far on this uh, negative direction, that you're ready to even uh, let people, their lives be destroyed, let people, millions of people live in penury, let millions of people go into food hunger. Can you imagine? Because you're just determined to make a profit. So as soon as we have that slight reorientation, which nature is insisting we're gonna have, because believe you me, what we're going through this uh, last year, we're going to go through a lot more by the end of this year, the beginning of 2024, because we are going to enter what we call the El Nino season. That yeah. is about a year of natural heating, yes, which joins the global warming heating. And there are going to be some terrible catastrophes. God forbid that we should get too hard hit in Lagos. So the solar cells can be made a lot cheaper. They are coming down anyway. People are still making profit because the demand for them is growing. And when you have a tremendous demand and then the technology is accelerating, and that's the beauty of it. Very soon, very soon, my all right, all right, all right, Desmond, let's, let, let's you'll talk. You'll be able to use paint. You'll be able to paint your car, okay? So, so maybe maybe we should talk about this use, now. Let's use petrol. Uh, let, let's talk yeah, about this now, because uh, for those who have put out an argument for the adoption, adaptation of uh, renewable energy just to ensure that we emit less of this, uh, you know, I would like to say poisonous or had that, uh, you know, How substance that are not uh, very good for the environment. Now, uh, there are causes that organizations and individuals to and should adopt the use of renewable energy sources to reduce gas emissions. So I'd like you to talk uh, about what uh, renewable energy sources can individuals and organization adopt to reduce, you know, gas emissions. Uh, you know, to the greenhouse, and also uh, what behavior can people, Nigerians, adopt? Because, of course, Nigerians, and then you go into classification, you have groups, and what have you, to address the issue of climate change in Nigeria? Mm, very, very deep questions. <clears throat> well, I think, um, you know, it can be done. It's just, you know, it's, it's all there. As I was saying earlier, you know, the technology is going so fast that they actually have a paint now. Yes, a paint and even glass, transparent glass, that um, are photovoltaic sensitive, that they can produce electricity. So with just a little bit more push in the technology, you will actually have a situation whereby you can put this paint, you can put this kind of glass in your windows of your car and so on, even in windows of your house. It'll produce electricity and it'll make people uh, more, more independent because you'll be producing most of the electricity you need right from your premises or from your vehicle and so on. It, it, the technology is there and that's what gives us hope. But if we don't deploy it quickly enough, the consequences will be totally catastrophic. And this is where we as individuals, we as people and as Nigerians, are, we are people that do fear God. We know there is a God, there is a creator who was in the beginning, before the beginning began, a creator who put the breath of life into us. And because of that, all we need to do is just refer to our scriptures. And the scriptures are very clear in terms of uh, the human being's role in nature. The, uh, my, my, uh, my 
Muslim brothers, they tell me that uh, we are caliphates, that we are stewards of creation. The scripture I'm more familiar with is the, is the Christian scripture, which says, you know, without any trace of doubt whatsoever, that we are here to replenish the earth. We're here to care for the garden. We're here to look after. This is our primary function. And it's also one of the most logical admonitions from scripture because we're replenishing what? Our life support system. Our children's life support system. So it's the most logical thing to replenish it. And once we get that into our minds, that, hey, yes, we're actually following what scripture tells us and we're expressing love to the creator by following his scripture and love to our neighbors and our children by ensuring that we're looking after their life support systems. So a renewal of the mind will bring us into that paradigm shift that is necessary to care for the creation. Yeah, there'll be sacrifices. There'll be areas where we might not make so much money. All right, thank you so much, Desmond. Thank you so much. Uh, we have to really go. Thanks for all the useful insights and, uh, you know, that you have um, shared uh, with um, Nigerians this morning about how we need to renew our mind and, of course, uh, work towards um, renewable energy. We do appreciate your time on The Breakfast this morning. My pleasure. Love the creator, love his creation. All right, thank you so much, and Desmond. Desmond Majakudumi is um, an environmentalist, and uh, we've been looking about saving the earth. Messy. <laughs> well, not, not necessarily that, but um, <laughs> also moving towards renewable energy. And we yes, understand what that means. As a country, we haven't been able to generate enough to sustain us. And then mm -hmm. there's a need for us to move from a certain kind of energy uh, generation pattern to another type. And the big question is, are we ready? Uh, right. Especially when we have to depend on the other for survival. Uh, we are saying we need to move away from fissile fuel. Let's not forget that oil. Uh, we're still importing oil, petrol, and what have you. Are we really ready? Do we have what it takes? Is there political will, you know, to move towards clean energy? Uh, it's a conversation that will never end. We constantly have all of this. But it's fine. We need to bring it to an end at this point in time. And that's because we're joined the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news break. But if you missed out on any part of our conversation, it will be great and fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as a Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa lifestyle. My name is Messi Aboko. Have a fantastic Tuesday morning. And I'm Justin. I've got a new many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.